CSS unit might be confusing to many people as there are quite a few of them, but 99% of the time, you will not need to use all of them. So in this video, we're going to go through the most common unit and as usual, we're going to learn them by solving different tasks as well as starting this website. We will learn more about pixels, percentages, viewport unit, rams, ams, and lastly, the character unit. So if you want to follow along, be sure to check out the description to download the resources. Otherwise, if you're ready, let's get started. If you download and open the resource, you would find in total two files, index.html and style.css. In the index.html, you could find the content that we will be working with. And in the style.css, you would find in total five tasks that we need to do. You also notice that I'm using live server. So whenever we change something, the page would be reloaded and we can see the changes. You can pause the video and take a closer look at the project. But if you're ready, let's get started. In the first task, we will get to know more about pixel. Pixel is default unit for many element. So for example, if we inspect this bird photo, you will see that the width of the bird photo is equal to 934 pixel. So in the CSS, we can change the width of the image. So in the task number one, if we scroll down, we need to give the bird photo a width of 320 pixel. And if we save that, now the width of the image is equal to 320 pixel and the ratio of the image is still now respected. In the task number one, we also need to give the author photos for the pixel width and height. So if we scroll down and in the author, we can give width equal to uh, 40 pixel and height equal to 40 pixel. If we save that, now you can see here that the width and the height of the author photo equal to 40 pixel. But now the image is distorted. Uh, to fix it, we can use object fit and give it cover value. All right, now it is fit. In the task number one, we also need to add 20 pixel padding to the about section. So if we scroll down uh, in the about, we can give it padding equal to 20 pixel. All right, so now you can see that there's spacing here and here. And we also need to give buttons horizontal padding equal to 16 pixel and vertical padding equal to 24 pixel. So if we scroll down to the button, we can give padding top and bottom equal to 16 pixel and left and right equal to 24 pixel. If we save that, you can see that there is spacing here and here. All right, in the task one, the last thing that we need to do is to give heading 32 pixel font size and the paragraph to have 16 pixel font size. So if we scroll down over here in the H2 element, we can say font size equal to 32 pixel and the paragraph is going to have font size equal to 12 pixel. All right, so this looks much better. And you can see that pixel can be used for setting the width, the height, or the padding margin, or the font size. Now the width of the bird image is equal to 320 pixel, but I want it to get bigger when the screen gets bigger and gets smaller when the screen gets smaller. So to make the image responsive, Let's move on to the task number two and get to know more about pixel. In the task number two, first we need to set the section to have display equal to flex and align items to be center. So if we scroll down over here, we can say here display flex and align item equal to center. There is a separate video about flex, but what we have done here is that we set the section to be a flex container so that the children element are going to be on the same row. And by setting align items to be center, the item inside the section is going to be aligned in the center on the vertical axis. All right, in the task number two, we also need to give the bird photos and the size section to have the width of 50%. So 
So if we scroll down over here, instead of 320 pixel, we can set it to have 50% for the birth photo. And uh, similarly, we can set the width uh, to be 50% for the size section. And by doing this, the width of the birth photo is going to equal to 50% of its parent width. In our case, it's going to be the section element. So for example, if uh, I set the width of the section equal to, let's say, uh, 500 pixel, and if we save that, the width of the birth photo is now going to equal to 250 pixel. And if we set this to be 50% as well, for example, if we save that, you can see that the width of the section is now equal to 50% of its parent element. In our case, it's going to be the body element. And the width of the birth photo is still equal to 50% of the section. All right, so let's remove this as it's not the task. Percentage is also used for the border radius. So for the task number two, we also need to give the author photos to have border radius equal to 50%. So if we scroll down over here in the author, we can give the border radius equal to 50%. So if we notice here and we save that, the square is now going to become the circle. All right, so that's about percentage and the task number two. Let's move on to the task number three and get to know more about viewport height and viewport width. For the task number three, we need to give the section height of 100VH. So if we scroll down over here and if we say height equal 100VH. Now, if we do this, the section height is going to be equal to 100% of the view height. And to visualize it better, Let's add height 100% to the birth photo and give it object fit equal to cover as well. And now you see that the section height is going to be 100% of the view height, which is this much. And you can see here as well. So now if I make the height of the window a bit smaller, the height of the section is going to get smaller as well. All right, so that's about the viewport height. What about viewport width? So for example, in the section, if I set the width equal to 50 view width, now the width of the section is going to equal to 50% of the viewport width, which is this much. And now you might wonder what is the difference between the viewport width and the percentage. One main difference is that with the percentage is going to be relative to the parent element, whereas the viewport width and viewport height, they are relative to the viewport. You can see here that the width of the birth photo equal to 50%, which is 50% of the section width. So if I change this to be view width, and if I save that, it's not going to be relative to the section anymore. It's going to be relative to the viewport. All right, so let's change it back to percentage and let's remove this. And some people also use viewport width to set the font size. So in the task number three, we also need to give the heading font size equal to five viewport width. So if we scroll down here, in the edge to uh, if we say phi vw here and we save that and if we resize the window the font size of the heading is going to be relative to the view part and if it get bigger the font size is going to get bigger and if the view part gets smaller the font size is going to get smaller and personally i don't use viewport width for the font size as you never know the uh, size of the user screen. So when it comes to font size, I would prefer to use pixel, rem, or m. And to get to know more about rem and m, let's move on to the task number four. In the task number four, first we need to give the heading font size equal to two rem and the paragraph to have font size equal to one rem. 
So if we scroll down over here, in the F2, we're going to give it 2 RAM. And the paragraph is going to be 1 RAM. If we save this, you will not see much change. The reason is that 1 RAM is equal to 16 pixel for most of the browsers by default. And 2 RAM is equal to 32 pixel, uh, which is 16 pixel multiplied by 2. So why do we use RAM instead of pixel? The reason is that RAM is relative to the root element font size. So for example, if we give the HTML element a font size equal to 20 pixel, and if we save that, and if we inspect the heading, and if we go to computed, the font size of the heading is now equal to 40 pixel, which is 2 RAM, which is 2 times of the font size of the HTML element, in our case, uh, 20 pixel, and the paragraph is going to have the font size equal to 20 pixel, which is 1 RAM, and if you use Chrome, you can go to setting under appearance and customize font. If we now change this to be 22, and delete the font size in the HTML element, and we save that. Now, if we inspect the heading, the font size of the heading is now equal to 44, and the font size of the paragraph is equal to 22. So one RAM is equal to 22. So that is the main reason why we use RAM. All right, so let's change it back to 16 pixel. So we know that RAM is relative to the root element. What about M? To find out the difference, let's say here, what if we have 2M instead of 2RAM, and here 1M instead of 1RAM. If we save that, again, nothing is going to change. But if we go here in the about, if we set this to have font size equal to 20 pixel, and save it, if we inspect the heading, now, the font size equal to 40 pixel, which is two times font size of the about element. And the paragraph is equal to uh, 20 pixel, which is equal to the font size of the about section. So M is relative to the parent element and is not relative to the root element. So let's say if we give the HTML font size equal to 22 pixel, uh, this is not going to get affected because the about element has the font size equal to 20 pixel. All right, so I hope you get the idea. So let's delete this and this as well. In the task number four, we also need to give the button 0 0.75 RAM font size and this padding so uh, first, let's go back here in the button. Uh, let's say font size now equal to 0 0.75 RAM and padding equal to, uh, let's go here and copy this and paste it here. So what happened here? We know that one RAM equal to 16 pixel by default. So let's change it one RAM for example. And if we inspect the button, M here is relative to the font size. So in this case, one M is equal to one RAM, which is 16 pixel. So for example, if we change it to be two RAM, if we save that, you can see here that now the padding top and bottom equal to uh, 32 pixel, which is equal to two RAM. So by using M for the padding, if the font size of the button gets smaller, for example, 0 0.75, the padding is going to get smaller so that the ratio of the button is going to be reserved. All right, so that's about RAM and M. Let's move on to the last task and get to know about CH unit. Now, if we resize the screen to be bigger, the paragraph width is going to get wider. And in most case, we don't want the width of the paragraph to be too wide, so we need to give them some max width, and we can use pixel for it. 
but there is a better unit for this case. So in the test number 5, we need to give the paragraph max width equal to 50 ch. So if we scroll down to the paragraph in here, in here we can say max width equal to 50 ch. Now if we save that, we will not see much of different unless we make the screen much bigger. So let's change it to 5 ch for now. If we save that, now the paragraph has some uh, max width equal to 5 ch. And how exactly does ch work? 5 ch is equal to 5 times width of the zero letter. Now if we go to the index.html and in here if we type in 6 uh, 0 and if we save that and now if we inspect the paragraph you can see that the width is exactly the width of phi 0 so if now we change uh, the uh, font size for example 1.5 rem and if we inspect it again the width is still going to be phi time the number 0 so now you can see that by using ch, no matter the font size, the font width, or even the font style is going to be relative to the width of the zero character. All right, so for the task, let's change it back to be 1m here and uh, 50ch here, and let's save that. All right, so that concludes the exercise. Let's summarize what we have learned. First, pixel. We learned that we can use pixel to set the width and height of boxes and we can also use it to set the font size or the spacing and it is an absolute unit that it does not change based on the screen size next we have percentage in most case percentage is going to be relative to the parent element so in the example we set the width of the birth photo to be 50 percent which means that the width of the birth photo is going to be 50% the width of the parent element, in our case, the section. And we also use it to set the border radius of the author photo to be 50% to make square into circle. And the next topic that we covered was viewport based unit. In the example, we use it to set the height of the section to be 100% of the viewport height. And we use the viewport width to set the font size of the heading to be 5% of the viewport width. By doing this, the font size of the heading is going to be relative to the viewport width. But when it comes to font size, there are better units like rem and m. In the example, we use rem to set the font size of the heading and paragraph. By default, one rem is equal to 16 pixel for most browser, and rem is relative to the root element font size. And different from rem, M is relative to the font size of the parent element. In the example, we use M to set the padding of the button, that the padding will be relative to the font size of the button. And lastly, we get to know about character unit CH. In the example, we use CH to set the mark width of the paragraph. 1 CH is equal to the width of the zero character. Alright, so that's it for the video. If you like it, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and check out devchallenges.io for more tutorials. Otherwise, happy coding and see you in the next video. Bye!